Hello, Oscillator Sync here. Timber from Bastel is a wave shaping module which offers a range of clipping and wave folding functionality. It is easy to hear the words wave folding and immediately think of the classic West Coast synthesis paradigm, imagining the distinctive alien vocalizations of a bookler, music easel. And please don't get me wrong, in this video I will absolutely be sending a wave folded triangle wave oscillator into a low pass gate because it is absolutely the pinnacle of bleep bloops. However, I think it is unkind to pigeonhole wave shaping into just that particular role, and that's especially true of the timber, which, like many classic Bastel modules, has its functionality arranged into less conventional forms and offers utility which might not be expected in a module of this type. This video, I hope, will act as a kind of video manual. We'll start by exploring the module top to bottom in a more conventional setting to get a feel for what it can do for us technically, and then move on to checking out how it can be used creatively in other roles. There's a lot to explore, so the video has extensive chapter markers, so please feel free to jump around to find the information and sounds that you're most interested in. As a point of transparency, Bastel sent me the timber for free in order to make this video, but I haven't otherwise been paid for it. And as always, I don't feature stuff on the channel that I don't think is interesting. Okay, let's see how timber can chop up our waveforms. So here is timber, and we'll get into the sounds in just a second, but I just want to quickly introduce um, its um, sort of basic architecture, because it's a little unusual, I think. So uh, Timber has a single input stage, which then splits off and drives two completely independent and different wave shaping circuits. Uh, you have the wave driver, or one, which is mostly focused around uh, sort of clipping, uh, although not exclusively. And then we have um, the wave folder, or two, which is mostly uh, focused around wave folding, although again, not exclusively. Uh, each of these uh, different circuits, as I say, are driven by a single input, uh, but you can take their outputs uh, separately on the one and two outputs here. There's also ways that we can mix them together within the module, uh, which we will get into. Strictly speaking, uh, this module has uh, three outputs and two inputs when it comes to uh, signal flow. But to begin with, we're just going to um, work with the main input, which is the jack right in the center here, which is labeled, um, well, it's labeled inputs, uh, which is straightforward enough. So um, I've just got a triangle wave to begin with, which sounds like this. So that's just coming from the 2HP um, VCO. And I'm going to plumb that into the input of timber and we'll just take the output first of all from the uh, one side here. Now you might just about be able to hear maybe just in the background with the shape knob turned all the way down but essentially we've got very little signal with the shape knob turned all the way down because what the shape knob is actually doing is amplifying our input signal and pushing it in to our two different uh, wave shapers. So it's, it's essentially a VCA. Uh, so as we turn up the shape control, we'll first of all hear our triangle wave pretty much unmolested, but as we turn up, we can hear its characteristics change. as we change the shape of the wave. And of course, changing the shape of the wave is going to change its harmonic content, and therefore its timbre. And then by moving this shape control around, we are getting timbral change. Um, and again, that's just a straight up boring, uh, straight up boring triangle wave going in there. So uh, that's just briefly, we'll dive into these in a little bit more detail in just a second. That's the one side, and if we check out the two side, we can hear that it has quite a different characteristic. A different set of harmonics being added there. And this shape control is, of course, CV controllable. Uh, so we have the shape input just here and we can plug an envelope in there in this case and then we have a attenuator for that input change 
change the envelope shipper. And we can hear that tab will change over time, kind of like an inverted filter. We're adding harmonics, adding uh, more top end and twang rather than taking it away. The shape control here will set our initial point, so if we wanted it droning, we can do that. And then the shape uh, CV input is going to add to that. Which is actually a really cool sound. Cool sort of twanging of a string almost. You can hear that on the one side as well. Again, a different kind of movement that we're getting there. But uh, let's uh, just for a moment focus in on what each of these two different sides can actually do and what the wave shaping is doing for each of them. So we're going to start on uh, side one, the wave driver, and I'm just going to set a couple of these controls. I'm going to put the fold control here on the left to the no position, and I'm just going to move the drive control down to soft. Uh, so here is our triangle wave, again, basically unmolested. So the wave driver side has a uh, clipper which can work either to do soft clipping, hard clipping or kind of a combination of both um, which is quite interesting and then a simple uh, wave folder. So at the moment I have the wave folder set to no which means we get no wave folding and we're just going to be clipping the uh, wave here and we're on the soft mode and you can hear as I turn up the shape control First of all, what we get with this triangle wave, because we are shearing off the top of that waveform a little bit, we actually almost get a duller sound because it moves towards almost like a sine wave for a little bit, especially with it on soft mode. And then as we push it up, we start to reintroduce a bunch of harmonics. We actually end up with something that's basically a square wave. So this is a really cool place at the low part of the knob here where it actually kind of almost gets duller and comes out the other side. It's quite, quite a fun thing to modulate. Perhaps we'll try and find that midpoint there. And I'll just grab uh, an LFO here. Pop it into the shape control. Speed up a bit. Turn this up a little bit. And what we get is this kind of morphing between triangle and square via a sign almost. It's pretty cool. Anyway, um, we'll come back to some more modulation in a little bit. So, uh, yeah, this is the soft mode on a triangle. Uh, this is the hard mode, and we should get a slightly harder edge to it, should get square a little bit faster. And you see that it was getting brassier earlier there. Or we had a much more gradual thing happening on the soft. And in the middle, uh, in theory it should be a mixture of the hard and soft, but I actually, I actually think it, it's softer than the soft at the low end, uh, interestingly. then gets very sharp at the other end. Again, we've got that interesting place where we can almost get morphing waveforms at the low part of the control there. Very nice. Uh, the fold control here, I'll just get back to soft for a second. The fold control here introduces a single stage wave folder and we have two settings here, which is low and high, which is basically the threshold at which the wave folding kicks in. Um, so 
With wave folding, when you hit a particular threshold, the fold the wave rather than going any higher is going to bend back in on itself until it then falls below that threshold and comes back down, introducing some interesting new harmonics. Uh, so what this will do, the low and high, will basically change where within the shape knob we're getting the folding kicking in. Here's low. And here's high. And you'll also get a different interaction depending on which drive mode you have as well. So I think you get most obvious folding when the drive mode is in the middle. And now in this short throw of the wave, again, we have a whole bunch of different uh, wave shapes. Give it a little... love it's just such a, a, a nice control to modulate uh, let's check out the uh, wave folder side here uh, so we have only one control here which um, gives us um, three different flavors of wave folding probably the default mode I guess here is the okay uh, which uh, gives us a classic five stage wave folder which is something like you'd expect on like a, a music ease or something similar so um, we get a far larger range of harmonics being introduced as we turn up the shape And then eventually, after the fifth fold, we get a clipping stage, which then just brings out those bright harmonics right at the top. But you can hear within the throw of the shape here, on this basic waveform at least, there are almost some points where you get clean octave ups almost. So that the uh, fundamentals almost disappeared there. And you know, you don't have to modulate the shape control, we can just use it to find these sort of vocal points here. Yeah. Uh, so, um, the next mode here, uh, actually we'll go all the way to the top to the KO mode here. So this only, uh, this uh, still makes use of the five stage folder, but there's um, asymmetry introduced in, it, in here, which gives you a much different wave shape happening in here. Um, so you get that one obvious fold, but then... It becomes more about the clipping after that and kind of like a uh, what almost sounds like a pulse width thing happening so not as complex as the uh, okay mode uh, but it's kind of something somewhat similar to what's happening tonally on the one side The no mode here in the middle uh, disables all but the last uh, wave folding stage and the clipping stage. So um, I, I guess technically this is closer to what the wave driver is doing when you have, um, I, I guess, soft and uh, one of the high or low modes on the fold. But it does still sound different to the other side and produces a different set of harmonics.
It's almost like a high pass. Effect very high up as that fundamental kind of gets sucked out. Yes, very cool. So I'm going to pop um, back into side one here. And I'm just going to turn off the wave folding uh, just here. And I guess we'll go to soft mode here. Uh, just turn up the shape a little bit. Because I want to talk about this next control here, which is symmetry. This operates the same as the shape uh, mode on the input, so it's what's getting driven into our two different wave folding circuits here. And what this does is it applies a DC offset to our input. Um, what that does sort of conceptually is it pushes one side of the waveform closer to the uh, wave shaping part of the circuit because we're always working within these thresholds and when we cross those thresholds that's when we get the wave shaping. So by moving it towards one side uh, more than the other, one half of the waveform is going to get, um, in this case, clipped uh, more than the other. And indeed, yes, that does sound quite a lot like pulse width modulation in this case. And it's that kind of vibe that we get when we modulate it. But in terms of just sort of setting it and forgetting it, it's a great way to thin out a sound, get more of a reedy. vocal kind of sound. Uh, but yes, we should, probably should modulate that and see what it sounds like. Uh, so we have a control here for symmetry, and when we plug something in here, then the symmetry control is going to act as an attenuator for the input. So shape, you have an initial point, and then an attenuator here. For the symmetry control, this will be uh, acting like an attenuator when you plug something in. So yeah, we've got kind of a uh, chorusy, pulse width modulation-y kind of sound. Now of course when we start to introduce uh, wave folding into this as well, then we're going to get something that's again sort of like pulse width modulation but with that fold happening as well but it really does have that kind of coursey almost pitch wobble thing happening there which i think is great and bear in mind again this is just just a triangle wave. <laughs> uh, let's check that out on the uh, two side with the more complex folding. much different flavours with the different wave folding modes. That's hard. Lower pitch for that sound awesome. And we can get to the point where the DC is offsetting it so much that we actually get breaks in the sound. More on the modes with the clipping being hit earlier. You can kind of still hear in the background clean harmonic series.
really cool. And between the uh, symmetry and the shape knobs for any basic sound, you have that's making me do the mouth. <laughs> Uh, not that one. Let's, let's take the uh, the envelope into the shape there. Maybe give it some pitch movement. modulate the symmetry just a little bit. <laughs> and again, just as a reminder, that's our input. get such a wide range of different tones for a basic waveform. And yeah, the, the symmetry here is giving it a lovely plucky characteristic, just modulating it slowly. Great bass sound. Almost sounds like a basic two-op FM synth. And again, just as a reminder, this is our input. So just a huge range of timbres from just these two controls and changing the different modes here. So you don't even have to modulate these to find new waveforms from a basic waveform. But you can. So we're going to dive into some of the other features here in just a moment. But I thought we'd take a break here just to hear what different um, waveforms, different basic waveforms do when we put them through timber. Because we've just been listening to a triangle wave uh, so far. So let's start with a sawtooth wave here. Turn the pitch. So here we're going into uh, just oh, coming out of rather the one side. This is what our input sounds like. Yep, just like a, a sawtooth wave. And we're soft, and we'll start with no here. And we kind of get to this buzzy square kind of thing. More buzzy with the high mode on here. And if we introduce our wave folder as well, Again, we get this neat midpoint there where we're kind of going between the two different sounds. Let's modulate that. And if we apply symmetry, again, we're going to get that. So PWM vibe. With that thinning out. Nice. Coming out the other side. 
with our wave folding we'll start in the OK mode here it almost sounds like that classic kind of sync sound that you do with uh, with sawtooth waves symmetry again get that kind of plucky vibe going on and we put that DC there let's try the KO mode and you keep coming back to these kind of vocalizations I think they're really really cool wow wow um, and then in the no mode bit more noticeable fold that harmonic coming out oh, that once modulating uh, with an LFO <laughs> yes! And again, just, just to be clear, that's not being pitch modulated. There's no frequency modulation on that input. That's all that um, movement within the symmetry that's doing that. Uh, let's uh, also let's have us into a, um, a sine wave quickly as well. So this is a sine wave coming out of pizza. There's that deep, deep sign. Uh, so we're back on to uh, on no mode here and soft on the clipping. Notice that with the sine wave, we don't get that kind of in-between point that we had with the other two because we're not we haven't got anything to sort of uh, we haven't got a spiky edge for us to flatten out first so it just goes sort of big mode instead so our triangle we had that sort of moment where it got duller but we don't get that with the sine wave so that's soft it's in between Nice brassy. And his hard. Again, that kind of harder, faster onset there as we'd expect. Coming up to soft and giving us a little bit of wave folding. Cool vocalizations. Wah, wah, wah. Lovely. Let's take a look at the uh, other side as well. So we'll start on the OK. I kind of feel like the sine wave holds on to its fundamental a bit better. So got loads of bottom end happening. Dips out a little bit there, I guess. Again, so vocal. Give that some modulation. Wow, wow.
involuntary mouth movements for sure. Yeah. Lovely stuff. And just quickly the other modes as well. So here's no. That one thins out really nicely at the top there. Almost like. It really sounds like a high pass filter on this one. And then KO mode. Kind of has the vibe of the no mode, but without that high pass filter thing going on. Like the harmonics that are getting added are the same vibe. But it's not taking away in the same way. So much you can get from a single basic waveform by applying just those two controls, the shape and the symmetry. And we haven't even got onto complex inputs either. But there's still some more things that we want to talk about, um, even with these simple inputs. So far in the video, there is a tempting looking control here and an interesting looking output, which I have been dutifully ignoring. But the time has come to talk about crossfade. What the crossfade control allows us to do is crossfade between two signals within timber. However, what those two signals are is probably slightly more um, flexible than you might initially imagine. So let's just grab our triangle wave input, plumb that in there, and we'll take an output from the crossfade output. <laughs> And with this in its kind of default mode, which is with this switch up and nothing plumbed into the crossfade input here, this is going to crossfade between the two sides of timber, the wave driver and the wave folder. So wave driver over here and wave folder over here. And you can hear because of the differing uh, phase that's introduced into this waveform, there are some really interesting midway points. And it, to me, it almost sounds like a wavetable. Now we can modulate this, of course, with CV. So uh, we have a crossfade input here, and this little knob above it is the attenuator for that CV. So here's a just a straight LFO in there. And it definitely has that kind of almost wavetable feel. Of course, depending on how we have the shape set and whether we have the wave holding on on one side, we can get quite different sets of sound between them. I think this is also pretty interesting if we take a uh, random sample and hold type source in here as well. Again, kind of re reminiscent of that sort of wave table feel. And again, as always, adjusting the symmetry and the shape gives us so many different flavours. Yeah, very cool. So that's kind of the uh, default mode, if you like. So what other ways can we use this? Well, first of all is we can set this control down to input. And what that does is that now on the left hand side or negative portion of the crossfade, we're just hearing the original input signal. Uh, that's unaffected by the shape, so it's taken before the shape VCA. And we have our wave folder on the other side. So 
So this can be interesting because uh, if you don't want to get your additional timbre, oh, sorry, harmonic content by adjusting the shape, and instead you want to find a place in the shape and crossfade to it, this can work quite nicely uh, if we plug a uh, envelope in here into the crossfade as an alternative to driving the shape in. So quite a different feel to doing something like this. Which is just modulating the shape control. So that's going from our input over to the wave driver, sorry, the wave folder even. Our other um, option here is to put something else into the crossfade input. So for example, I could grab uh, a different oscillator, which is um, just a sine wave from pizza. And now we can blend between our wave driver input and that sort of low rumbling sine wave we have down there. So this can be a great way if you're doing more extreme shaping to maybe bring in some more bottom end. But of course you can crossfade between anything you want. And it should be noted that with this set to input, you've literally got a straight up crossfading module where you can crossfade between whatever's going into the input and whatever is going into the crossfade input. Uh, you know, there are other um, less fully featured options if you just want to crossfader, but the nice thing about Timber is that you have this utility in here if you're not using it for its wave shaping functionality. The final CV input that we have here is the feedback CV. And what this does is it's a VCA controlling a feedback loop coming from the output of the wave folder back into the input of the unit. And this can give us uh, new timbres. Um, in particular, I think this works better with more complex sounds. But let's take a listen to what it's doing to our uh, triangle. So we'll just turn things up a little bit here with the shape control. Just set the symmetry in the middle for the moment. And I've just got a slider here off to the side here, which allows me to turn up the feedback. You can hear that we get some kind of chaotic additional towers and kind of jumps in the sound occasionally. But it's very reactive to where the shape knob is. It tends to react better with the shape knob a little bit lower down because otherwise you're just hitting the clipping straight away. Also, use it to bottom out the DC a little bit earlier. Let's maybe try that with a uh, envelope for a second. Uh, here's an envelope here. So you can hear things get pretty chaotic. Maybe let's try a uh, random sample and hold here. As I say, we'll take a listen to what this does on some more complex signals, because I think that's where it shines in particular. But 
yeah, we have that feedback as an additional way to change the timbre. So we have such a wide range of ways to modulate the timbre. And, and remember, again, this is just a straight up triangle wave coming input. So just before we move away from the basic triangle wave input, what I wanted to do to close out this section is exert some more extreme modulation to the timber. In particular, um, I'm thinking audio rate modulation, some sample and hold, maybe some noise, uh, just to see uh, what will happen when we hit it with something a bit more um, vigorous, and also to see what happens in combination. Uh, so um, what we've got here, if we just listen to the output of timber, Here's just our triangle wave friend I'm coming out of the crossfade output here, so we can modulate that. And uh, yeah, let's start just with a uh, sine wave coming from pizza. It's tuned roughly the same way. We'll come into the shape input here. <laughs> Lovely stuff. To a degree, with the shape low, we're kind of getting just kind of ring mod to begin with. Change the octave. But as we bring the modulation amount up and we're pushing into the wave shapers, it becomes a more complex proposition. A very cool one as well. Really cool, growly kind of thing going on in there. A lot of what wave folding ends up doing is quite vocal. Let's try that going into uh, the symmetry next. Bit more subtle in a way uh, again at low shape amounts it's kind of just acting like a mixer with a little bit of that ring mod flavor but again as we push more into the wave shaping kind of thinning thing coming in as well. Let's try a different octave. I, I know from experience that my favourite here is the crossfade modulation, if you give it some audio rate. Kind of bias it one way or another. Big sounds. Yeah, so that's some uh, audio rate modulation. Um, noise is not as interesting, I, I don't think, honestly. Um, so I've got some filtered noise here. So we can, it's quite cool into shape because you kind of get that sort of rattling in those of harmonics. So it might be quite cool into a high pass filter just to get a bit of movement and because we're starting to shift around the harmonics a little bit. It's kind of similar to when you put a, fil uh, a uh, noise source into a filter to modulate it. Uh, into uh, symmetry. 
second it just kind of acts like a mixer not as interesting yeah uh, and then to crossfade again it's bumping into those different harmonics on either side of the crossfade but it's mostly kind of just acting like a mixer kind of but again it Adding a little bit of noise into something, even if you've got nothing else modulating it, can just add a little bit of texture. So yeah, so just sort of sitting under there, if we low past that, that might be really, really pretty, actually. Cool. Uh, let's try some sample and hold. Uh, so into the shape first. If I can... There we go. And this is really cool, um, because the wavefold was introducing harmonics at different shape levels, you kind of get this arpeggiated harmonics thing. Which is obviously really interactive with the symmetry as shape always is. Kind of that talking vibe in there. Uh, in the crossfade. Kind of less extreme, but because we've got the two sides set accentuating different harmonics, we are sort of shifting between those harmonics. Not as exciting as the shape, but more subtle if that's what we want. And the symmetry. And we're just moving that wave shape up and down. It almost, at lower shape levels, sounds like um, we're modulating a high pass filter. Still quite nice, but I think uh, the shape one is really the the king here. Uh, but let's maybe uh, combine that with my favourite for the crossfade, which is the audio right. Let's put just an LFO in symmetry to get some of that pulse width vibe. I happen to have this same output patched into a filter from VCA. And if that isn't premium bleep bloops, I don't know what it is. Isn't this what we all got into modular for?
pop some spring reverb on that and we are done. And just a reminder, that's just a triangle wave going in there in the first place. All other variation is happening other than the filter in timber. No pitch mod, that's just the symmetry being moved around. One of the things I really appreciate about Timber is that it is DC coupled at its input. And what that means in practice is that we can use it to process sub audio rate signals such as LFOs, sequences or other CV, even static voltages actually. So uh, to that end I've got a little sound here from Pizza that's been modulated, um, or rather the filter that's going through has been modulated with a triangle wave. And I've also got here a kick drum. The reason I've got the kick drum here is because this is a tempo synced LFO and I think this is where this uh, particular uh, use of timber really really uh, shows its strengths. So at the moment our crossfade is turned all the way to the left and the wave driver input, or sorry, rather the wave driver side of the crossfade is set to input so we're just hearing our original triangle wave and as we sweep it across to the other side this is going to be the wave fold. Now at the moment we can barely hear any movement because the shape has turned all the way down, so we're not even at unity gain yet. But if we turn this up, we should be able to get to more or less our original. Modulation, more or less. Now, as we move that shape up higher, we're going to start to fold our LFO, which is going to introduce new harmonics. Now, when we do that with audio rate signals, we can kind of hear the harmonics as the harmonic series. When you're working with something that's sub audio rate, harmonics kind of translate to rhythms instead. So as we bring this up, we'll start to introduce rhythmic variations into our LFO. Here now we've kind of folded it in half, get almost like a double time, but one half of it is not quite as deep as the other. Here it's kind of accenting. Each side is not the same sort of height. Mm -mm, kind of asymmetrical rhythm. Kind of a shuffled thing with a little, little extra peak in there. That peak's a bit more obvious now. Almost a triplet feel, but like a shuffled triplet feel. one. And of course we could also add symmetry to this as well to, to find other rhythms inside here as well. Although because this is a unipolar LFO we're mostly just going to be doing the same thing as shape actually I think. Tuplets or something. And then up at the top, we're basically clipping it again. I 
And if we take a, a slow LFO that's also tempo synced, we could put that into the shape control. And have it evolve over time. Probably needs to be even slower than that. But you can see how we're evolving that sound. But it's always staying in time because it's a, um, being generated from a tempo synced uh, LFO in the first place. But yeah, we can uh, use it to make more complex LFO shapes from relatively boring triangle waves. So just continuing on with this idea that we can wavefold CV. What we have in this patch is a two bar loop coming from PAMS. That's going into timber, which at the moment is set to crossfade on the left hand side, which is just the inputs we're hearing the original signal. That signal is then going out into disting, which is a quantizer in this case, and that quantized signal is going into pizza, which is what we're hearing. Now on the wavefolder side, obviously we are going to be wavefolding the sequence. You can hear how it's a very different sequence, most of it's quite a lot lower, but some of the elements of the contours are still quite evident, those high notes in particular. But what gets really, really fun here is when you start to find spots in between the crossfade. And some of these areas will have vibes which are very much similar to the input, but with some shifts around. Generally, things will get a bit more constrained. a lot more static. Quantize is struggling with some of those voltages. But you can see how this is kind of a riff on the classical idea of taking a sequence and having an attenuator or an offset or both before it in order to find new sequences within that sequence. This doesn't do quite the same thing. In many ways it's a little bit more interesting because the contours are similar but different. So yeah, you can absolutely wavefold CV. So moving away from simple waveforms and onto something a little bit more complex. And what we're going to use is rings being agitated by some noise. So we've got a nice, rich resonator sound. And that's just the dry sound here. On, uh, I've got a little bit of reverb as well. On this fader, we've got rings going into timber. Uh, and that's going into a filter here, which is an MS-20 style filter. At the moment, it's wide open. But just in case we need to temper things a little bit, I have that there. And more complex waveforms are going to be affected in more complex and extreme ways. So at the moment we're going uh, coming out of the crossfade app, but we're just hearing the wave driver. And I've got it to no folding and just soft clipping. So let's just have a listen to how this more complex waveform uh, is clipped. I'll just try and balance the levels a little bit. Lovely rich distortion, which heads into full on fuzz. Just 
have a listen to the other two modes here. So this is the in-between clipping mode. It's soft, that's in-between, a little bit more lower mid. But then getting harsh towards the top and the hard clipping is angry straight away. Now the symmetry is going to give us asyn a uh, asynchronous, asymmetric clipping, but we can't push it too far until it starts to choke the sound. But it does choke the sound in quite an interesting way. quite a rhythmic way, depending on what the input is like. Now we've also of course got the folding here. Uh, let's set the threshold to high so that when we get up to the top we start to fold and introduce additional harmonics. Can you hear it there? The sudden onset. of folding as well. What I've also got plumbed in here actually is uh, the feedback CV because this tends to work a little bit better with more complex sounds. Let's just see if we can find something interesting. Some interesting glitch sounds there. A little bit of symmetry. Turn the folding off. It's an interesting way to add texture. Lots of different flavours. Let's go across to the wave folder and in particular let's go to the OK multi-stage folder. Bring that shape up. Pretty extreme, probably too extreme for this complex input. The nice thing about the wave folder is though, we can push the symmetry a bit more. There we go. Big sort of wave table vibes. Let's just modulate that slowly. Good feedback. movement on the shape as well perhaps.
This is our input. And all of that texture and movement. Beautiful destruction. Snarling and growling. Let's try one of the other four modes. Yes, the symmetry's choking that out. Push that symmetry, you definitely have to use the multi stage. So cool. Let it bump up against the resonance a bit. such a great way to get drones that are very mobile and textured. Again, that's our input. Granted, we are filtering a little bit now. Yeah. Just as I say, beautiful destruction. Now you've got to believe that I could never live with myself if I didn't run a drum loop through timber. So to that end here, here's a drum loop. That's just the dry drum loop, comes straight out to sting. Here there's a little bit of ambience around it. But for the most part, it's a fairly punchy, dry signal. So this is timber. So at the moment we're just on the wave driver side. Soft drive, no folding. And around Unity we can already hear a bit of fattening. A little bit of compression, it's very pleasant actually. As we bring the shape knob up, obviously we'll introduce more gain and more drive. Things will start to get gritty, especially on the more high energy parts of the beat like the kick drum. Lovely. And then we can get into full on distortion. Now pretty much every hit of the drum is distorted. The kick, the snare, the toms. And as we push it up further, it will start to choke out altogether. And just sit up, basically generating DC and choke out. really gate. Let's hear the other two modes. So this is the uh, in-between mode. It feels like the bottom end blooms a bit more. Yeah. And then same deal as we get higher up, we'll start to choke and gate. And here's the hard clipper. Immediately you can hear that clipping on set a lot stronger. We start to get that spittiness even down here. Spit here. Let's go back to the soft mode just for a second. The symmetry is going to again choke things out pretty quickly, but with a little bit of it, we can just go a little bit of asymmetrical clipping, which can be nice. That's literally just off center. As we go further, we'll start to clip off one half and start to rectify things and get spit again. Let's turn on the 
Ingoy Fauré. You can hear there that that upper harmonic is being introduced into the kick. That's all squelch. That's not choking so much in that reverb is now just come right up to the front now. We get to gate right at the end, but if we mix that in with the original one. Fun, yeah. Let's get extreme and go across to the uh, the wave folder. Yes. This is how squelchy that kick drum gets. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is sick. How we get things to dull. Now the um, something I've been playing with actually is the idea of using this as kind of like a dirty wave folding, wave driving compressor. So I've got the envelope output from um, Aikido here, which has got that original dry signal in here, and I've run it through uh, kinks to invert it. Uh, so if we bring that into the uh, shape knob here, now as I turn the shape knob up, because it's inverted, it's going to be turning the shape down instead. So we can get to the point where we're getting all that squelch. And if we want to make the kick drum a little less squelchy, but still have the other stuff all crunchy, we can use the envelope follower inverted into the shape input to do that. Also, we can do that on the other side as well. Mix that in with the dry signal. Dry signal with that sort of compressed wave driver. Obviously, there's some strange stuff going on there as well. The other thing we can try here is introducing some of that feedback. Let's get things to go really weird. What? Let's try a different wave folder. That's just killing it. shape moving is how we get the feedback to do interesting stuff. It's like 
fact, there's a triplet baseline in there now. I can't explain that. And maybe I don't need to. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you can get to really destroy stuff. Is what I'm saying here. Yeah. 